Fungal infections are mainly opportunistic in nature, that is when the immune system goes down, the fungus takes advantage and causes infection. The immune system can go down in AIDS, diabetes, cancer, pregnancy, etc. Now the drugs that we use to cope these infections have different sites of actions or targets. Some of these drugs alter the cell membrane permeability by making pores in the cell membrane and thus leading to leakage of cellular contents and thus leading to death of the fungus cell. These drugs include azoles, polyenes and terbenafine. Other drugs will block the beta-glucan synthesis in the cell wall of the fungus which is an essential component for cell wall synthesis and these drugs uh, include echinocandins that is the drugs that end with fungins. Still other drugs can block nucleic acid synthesis by acting as anti-metabolites which are substances that inhibit cell growth by competing with a natural substrate in an enzymatic process. These drugs can include flucytosine and lastly we can disrupt the microtubular functions by griseofulvin and thus inhibit fungal mitosis by acting as a fungostatic drug. Now we'll discuss each of them in detail and I have to warn you that this will get a little messy but please bear with it. The polyenes include amphotericin B and nystatin. Amphotericin B is actually an amphipathic molecule that means it has both lipophilic and hydrophilic parts. Now its mechanism of action has been discussed first but in detail what it does is it interacts with the ergosterol in the cell membrane of fungus and thus produces the pores. It has the widest spectrum of activity of uh, all the antifungal drugs that we are going to discuss and is very good in systemic fungal infections but its limiting side effect uh, nephrotoxicity is a problem. Coming at the mode of administration it is not that water soluble so it needs to be administered in a lipid complex or a liposomal formulation or with deoxycholic acid. Deoxycholic acid is a bile acid remember and it is used to solubilize it in the IV form. It is not given orally because it does not have a good gut absorption and it cannot cross the blood brain barrier. So if you need to use amphotericin B for meningitis cases, cryptococcal meningitis, then you need to give it intrathecally and intrathecal injections is, uh, this is a dangerous process and can lead to side effects such as convulsions or headaches. It is considered the drug of choice for systemic infections by cryptococcus or mucor etc. And as I said, it has a widest spectrum. That's why it is also effective against many other fungi such as candida, aspergillosis, blastomyces, histoplasma, sporothrix and muromycosis etc. The mode of resistance to amphotericin B can be by decreasing the quantity of ergosterol in the cell membrane of fungi and thus it will not be affected by amphotericin B that much. The side effects that I talked about can be dose dependent and non-dose dependent. It is actually the most toxic of all the antifungal agents. The dose dependent uh, side effects include severe nephrotoxicity that can decrease the GFR and cause renal tubular acidosis and also lead to magnesium and potassium wasting and there is also normocytic and normochromic anemia due to decreased erythropoietin release. The non-dose dependent or infusion related side effects are fever, chills, muscle spasms, vomiting and a shock like fall in blood pressure and this can be managed with antihistamines, antipyretics and meperidine and glucocorticoids etc. Nystatin is 
too toxic for systemic use. So, it is only used topically for localized infections. It has poor absorption through the skin and mucous membranes. So, that is good for us because we do not want nystatin in the systemic circulation. It is used against oral and esophageal candidiasis by the swish and swallow method by which the patient uh, takes it and swishes it in, in his mouth and then swallows it. It can also be used for corneal, conjunctival, cutaneous candidiasis as well. The side effect is nausea and bitter taste. Coming to the azoles, they are classified into imidazoles and triazoles. The imidazoles comprises of ketoconazole as the prototype, myconazole and clotrimazole as well, while the triazoles comprises of fluconazole and you need to remember fluconazole, this is the most important one, ertaconazole, voriconazole, and posaconazole. Now, azoles inhibit fungal P450 dependent enzymes such as 14-alpha-D uh, methylase. This enzyme is involved in the conversion of lenosterol into ergosterol that is the final step of ergosterol synthesis. By inhibiting ergosterol synthesis, it will, uh, it will damage the cell membrane of the fungus. Azoles uh, apart from inhibiting fungal P450 enzymes also inhibit human liver P450 enzymes and thus can be uh, associated with drug interactions. Now, ketoconazole is the prototype imidazole and it is the most toxic among all the azoles. It can be used topically that is why and for systemic use it has been mostly replaced, replaced by triazoles. Increased acid increases its absorption that is after food when there is increased gastric acid secretion and decreased acid that is that can be due to proton pump inhibitors, antacids etc. will decrease its absorption. It has a high plasma protein binding metabolized in the liver and excreted in the feces mostly. An important side effect that you need to remember for ketoconazole is its inhibition of adrenal corticoid synthesis just as it inhibits ergosterol synthesis in the fungus. Now that in the males will cause gynecomastia and in the females will cause menstrual irregularities. Ketoconazole is the drug of choice in cutaneous uh, fungal infections such as mucocutaneous candidiasis or dermatophytosis and dermal leishmaniasis. Now remember all of these are topical uses and ketoconazole is rarely used in systemic fungal infections because of its inhibition of uh, hepatic enzymes and as well as adrenal enzymes. Myconazole and clotrimazole are also used topically and among both of these myconazole is safe in pregnancy. These are considered the drug of choice in dermatophytic and candida infections and also in automycosis. These are all topical uses, remember. Coming to the triazoles, the first drug fluconazole is a very important one and you need to remember this one because it has many advantages. Firstly, it is a broad spectrum antifungal agent. Secondly, its oral and IV absorption is very good and it can also be given topically. It crosses the blood brain barrier in contrast to amphotericin B because if we wanted to use amphotericin B for cryptococcal meningitis then we had to give it intrathecally remember but in this case even on oral and IV administration it will cross, uh, cross the blood brain barrier and can be used in cryptococcal meningitis. It is uh, excreted in the urine in unchanged form and uh, as I said it is used in cryptococcal meningitis, candidiasis and coccidioidal, I do not know how to pronounce this one. But what I do know is that fluconazole cannot be used in aspergillosis and for that we, we need to use 
the next uh, drug that is etaconazole and voriconazole. For the side effects, it is an enzyme inhibitor and thus will cause drug interactions and it is also teratogenic, so it is contraindicated in pregnancy, it can cause hepatic necrosis and rash. Etaconazole can be given IV or orally just as fluconazole but it will not cross the blood brain barrier in contrast to fluconazole but it can be used in aspergillosis. It is a backup drug for candidiasis. Boriconazole is the same as etaconazole. Its enzyme inhibiting property is a problem and it can cause QT prolongation in pregnancy and also visual and auditory uh, disturbances. Lastly, posaconazole is also used in aspergillosis and mucomycosis and food uh, increases its absorption. The next drug that we will see is terbenafine. Now this will also um, cause inhibition of ergosterol synthesis by inhibiting the enzyme squalene 2,3-epoxidase that is basically uh, catalyzing the second last step in ergosterol synthesis that is converting squalene into linosterol and this step will be inhibited by this drug. Terbenafine is a sidle drug. It cannot cross the blood brain barrier so it is only used in dermatophytic infections. Its use can be topical as well as oral. On oral administration it reaches high concentrations in skin, nails and adipose tissue. The side effects include dyspepsia, hepatitis and local ir irritation on topical use. The next drug is flucytosine which is actually 5-fluorocytosine. You can see it is a DNA based analog. Now this is a prodrug and for first it needs to go inside the fungal cell and for that it needs a permease enzyme from the fungus and secondly it needs to get converted into its active form that is 5-fluorouracil and for that too it needs a fungal enzyme that is cytosine deaminase which is actually a stupid thing to ask for because you're basically asking the fungus to play a part in its own murder. Well, the fungus knows better and it knows that you're there to kill it. So it will not give you those enzymes and thus will become resistant to this drug. But let's say the fungus was stupid enough to convert the prodrug into the active form. Then this active form, 5-fluorouracil, is actually an anti-cancer medication which after forming a nucleotide that is by triphosphorylation will get incorporated into RNA and stop its synthesis. It also inhibits thymidylate synthase enzyme and thus will inhibit the synthesis of thymine. Flucytosine has a narrow spectrum of antifungal activity and it is mainly used in combination with amphotericin B uh, to avoid resistance and in severe cryptococcal and candidal infections. It can cross the blood-brain barrier, so it can be used in cryptococcal meningitis as well. The side effects include bone marrow suppression leading to thrombocytopenia, leukopenia, etc. Alopecia and liver dysfunction. The next drug is griseofulvin, which acts by disrupting the microtubules of uh, fungal cell and thus will inhibit mitosis of the fungal cell. That is why it is static drug. This is a drug that is used systemically for a superficial infection. That means this, the infection is in the skin or a superficial area, but the drug is given systemically, orally. Now, why is that? Because griseofulvin has an ability to, in, to reach uh, high concentrations in keratin-containing tissues such as nails, uh, hair and skin etc where it is needed. It is generally used in skin infections by ringworm that is tenia and also onychomycosis. An important thing to remember about griseofulvin is that it also has disulfiram like effect that is it is uh, going to make the patient intolerant to ethanol and it is also an enzyme inducer not enzyme inhibitor. By its enzyme inducing activity, it will 
uh, decrease the effect of warfarin and oral contraceptives. Lastly, we have the echinocandins, which are the drugs that end in fungins. They are caspofungin and mecafungin. Their mechanism of action is by inhibiting beta glucan synthase in the uh, fungal cell wall and thus decrease fungal cell wall synthesis. It is not given orally, but with uh, but in IV infusion form it is given. It is expensive and thus a reserve drug for invasive aspergillosis and candidiasis. Side effects can include fever, headache, GI distress, rash and flushing due to histamine release. That's all about antifungal drugs.